Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And those of you that maybe are new to the area, uh, this is normal weather for the mountains of Arizona throughout the higher elevations. I would say all of us from, as soon as you top the hill from Black Canyon City, come up to God's country. We're all going to see this bright days, warmer days, cold nights. That elevation just makes the temperature swing between day and night extreme. And so you need plants that can take that. And so you need fruit trees. It's like fruit trees are going in the ground right now. It's the perfect time. Apples, pears, cherries, apricots, nectarines, they're all going in. Miniature, dwarf, semi-dwarf, they're all in. Cocktail trees. Um, But you need varieties that can take that. Well, I see so many. I was just at a, a box store. I won't say which one. And I was looking at the fruit trees, just comparing notes, making sure we're competitive. And uh, they had desert varieties sitting in there. And I'm going, oh my gosh, you can't grow that apple up here. You can grow it up here, but it'll never fruit. It'll be so rare that it sets fruit that it's, it'll be just a pretty blooming tree because it blooms too early. You need varieties that bloom later. The same thing with your shade trees. You need shade trees that can take the wind that the mountains have. We've got just, we have prevailing winds. They start now through the monsoon seasons. And and then you're, these, some of these plants can be, we call it leaf, leaf tatter. The wind just goes through that, that foliage and rips the foliage up. Well, you need some plants have thicker leaves. They've got variegation to the foliage that allows the wind to go through them. And so if you talk to your local garden center, whether it's Flagstaff, go up to Warner's. If you're Payson, go up to Plant Fair. Uh, Prescott, come over here to Waters. We'll help you. They're curating the plants so that they grow better, the ones that grow the best. So yeah, there's a hundred different varieties of maples, but there's three that do better than all the rest. So it's Autumn Blaze and Armstrongs. There's there's quite a few uh, that that you can grow, but that's the difference. Make sure you do your homework. You know which ones go where. And so I get so many folks. Here's here's another big mistake. This is mainly from the East Coast or Midwest folks. They come in and go, oh, I fell in love with with Phoenix. I want want saguaros and cacti. I want cactus gardens. That's what I want. And, and they'll come in and looking for them, and all we have is prickly pear, a choya, maybe some little clear cup, you know, uh, hedgehog kind of plants. But it's pretty thin pickings because cactus don't do well in cold climates. These are desert plants. So they'll go down and they'll spend two grand on, on cactus down there going, oh, I think I can get them. I'm going to plant them. And they'll be fine all summer long. But by Thanksgiving, they turn to black mush as that water inside that cactus freezes and expands. It just obliterates. It just instantly kills in one night, one mistake, one thing kills it off. So we do have, I mean, we've got barrel cactus coming in, some funky dinner plate uh, prickly pears. that we, We'll flirt with that zone eight stuff. So we're zone seven. We need plants and go down to 10 degrees. That's the central highlands area. Uh, but I'm in Chino Valley. You're, a, you're zone seven. I'm in Prescott Valley. You're zone seven. Prescott, zone seven. Uh, the the ridge lines might be a zone six. So Groom Creek, Highland Pines, uh, Iron Springs community up on top of, of uh, cresting up over to Skull Valley. The, we, that might be a zone six. Williams, zone six. Zone eight is going to be Dewey, Humboldt, probably Sedona, Camp Verde, Cottonwood, uh, Kirkland's. The, the next layer down, if you're, if you're at 5,000 foot and lower, you're probably a zone eight. So we do, we do flirt with some of those. I grow zone eight plants. These are plants that need to, they can go down to about 15 degrees and then they start to be damaged. Zone seven can go down to about 10, seven degrees and then they start to be damaged. Zone six is down to zero. 
So you can see that the lower that number, the lower the temperature those plants can handle. So if you're in a zone eight, you can grow USDA garden zone eight. You can grow zone eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that and lower you can grow. If you're up in the Highland Pines area or the Groom Creeks areas, you're a zone six, you can grow six, five, four, three, two, one. So that you, you can grow down to, I think a zone two is minus 40 or 50 degrees, some crazy cold that only the Midwest sees. We don't, we will never see that here, but it will tolerate. It'll, it'll just fly through that winter up there in Groom Creek. So that's kind of how you look at the USDA growing zones. Make sure you're not bringing desert plants up here to grow because they'll freeze out in the winter. Our wind is a variable with things that have bigger foliage. Another one that's interesting is this is more Southern California. You folks love your Japanese maples. Really, the East Coast likes it. Like uh, we see a lot of new New England folks come in. Um, Japanese maples. They do grow here. You read the national tag. It says, oh, it goes down to, it's a zone five. It goes down to any amount of cold. It's not the cold with that particular plant. Up here at this elevation, because the elevation, it's, 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 it's brighter. And so the foliage can burn on you. So the sun is so intense. It's actually a shade plant. Here, whereas other parts of the country, it's full sun. The tag that you read says, oh, well, grow in full sun. Not at a mile high uh, altitude. The sun is more intense with the dryness that we have, that uh, this dry air with a prevailing wind, it just wreaks havoc. It will grow, but it'll be the ugliest plant you've ever seen. You won't want it. But in the shade, I mean, I grow mine in containers got several Japanese maples. I like them. They're pretty. There's small leafed maples. They stay short. They're perfect in the under canopy of other trees, the north side of your house. I find they do take a lot of sun. They just don't like that midday, you know, 10 to 2 in June that it's 95 and it's just bright out. They're not going to fare well with that. They'll take an east coast, east, not east coast, east exposure or west exposure or full sun. I've got a two and a half story house overlooking the Dells, beautiful vistas, huge patios. And I needed some bigger plants to kind of soften up all the hardscape. Got some big pots, put a Japanese maple in there, got two of them. And they are just stunning. I've got red coral barked uh, uh, Japanese maples. I've got one that's a weeping Japanese maple. Very unusual. It's huge. It's been growing in this pot for, I don't know, 10, 12 years. And it's, it's magnificent. And so, but I have it protected. It's in the shade, north side of the house, in a pot. It's just, it's not the cold that gets it. It's the bright, bright sun and that wind that tends to have the leaves brown back. And it just, it just, do your homework on it or or talk to a neighbor that obviously has green thumbs. Gardeners love sharing advice. That's what's so social about gardening. Or talk, come to go to your garden center where they actually have certified nursery professionals. I mean, there's there's master gardeners. That's yeah, I take a, a nine-month class and I hang out with gardeners and we sip wine afterwards. Okay, that's good. But then there's certified nursery professionals. These folks know Latin. They, they grow plants. They know they talk in a different language and they really go deep. It's like Master Gardener on steroids. They will know and can walk you through and can help you. So you ask for that. And probably that's going to be your independent garden centers. If you're just doing red tip Votinia, no problem. They grow everywhere. They're like, they're a weed, basically. You plant them. It doesn't matter. They'll fill in and, and be fine. There's some better qualities. We're going to sell that upper end, you know, there's contractor grade. Then there's the entry level retail grade. Then there's premium grade. We're, your independents typically, typically are going to be on that, that upper scale. They're going to hold that plant for an extra year to make sure it's flushed out and really full. And so it takes a little more time to process them, get them, get them looking good. We've got a lot in store for you. Lisa Watersline is coming in with your garden questions right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. 
Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. The colors of spring are bursting at Waters 60th Spring Open House. COVID is over with a record number of Waters farmers showing off their newest, brightest flowers all weekend. Friday, we show off this year's showiest plant introductions. Saturday and Sunday is impromptu garden classes, plant garden giveaways, and drawings. Join the garden fun at Waters Garden Center's 60th Spring Open House, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, March 11th through 13th. 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heat, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Prescott Pansy. Prescott Pansy's giant three-inch flowers thrive in extreme March gardens. Large velvety blooms dazzle with radiant colors of blue, violet, yellow, and variations of stripes that look like smiling faces and love being planted in March. Shop the brightest spring flowers in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. All right, so we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are local gardeners asking, talking about, looking for? And so Lisa comes to share that, and then we can impart. You can learn something by hanging out with other gardeners in your neighborhood. And so we're helping to share that. So welcome back to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. You doing okay this week? Um. I'm hanging in there. That's all you can do. So hanging in there. So I left my radio on. Dang it. That's just my bad. I don't think the audience heard it, though. So I think we're okay. <laughs> they didn't notice we just thing. announced it. <laughs> live here at Waters Garden Center. <laughs> Literally live. So uh, anyway, um, where's that even going? I'm oh, there's uh, we got your father's service going. We're just trying to help. Thank you, everyone. Oh, my goodness. For yes. the sentiments. It is heart felt. We have the services Thursday. A celebration of life. Harold was a big man that lived the, in, in his community. It made a difference. Yeah. And it's it's going to be a community celebration. So uh, just thank you for those that have come in and just supported the family. I mean, everyone. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's heartfelt. So thank you for that. It is a community event. You, you Thursday at 11 o'clock, you're welcome to join us um, or send a card or whatever. Uh, it'll be at uh, Christian Fellowship Church over on Solid, Solid Rock. Rock Christian Fellowship <laughs> Church. I don't even think they use the word church in there. It used it's to be First Solid Baptist Rock. Church of. Uh, it used to be First Baptist. Uh, so anyway, but anyways, if I could say, I yeah. I have loved reading the notes and the yeah. condolences and just people talking about, oh, I moved here in the early '80s and Harold yeah. helped me and. Um, it just it is a true testament of he really did love this community. He loved helping people garden here. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much. You're welcome. So yeah, that, anyway, <laughs> I'll, I'll cover while you get yourself together. <laughs> we'll go into garden stuff. So whenever we feel bad or we, we get kind of get down, you know, I go out to the gardens and I talk gardening to gardeners and it lifts me back up to be there in the plants. I was interviewing, uh, had an interview with the courier this week. They're getting ready for their home insert for the home and garden show. Can't wait. It's coming back. The home and garden show is going to be back in Yavapai County. Wonderful. And they were asking, uh, so uh, uh, why do why do people garden? This was about edibles. And can you save money by gardening? Well, mm-hmm. well yeah, you can, you can grow a tomato, you can grow lettuce, very inexpensive herbs, so easy to grow. Mm-hmm. You can grow these things and yes, you can save a buck, but gardening isn't about pinching pennies. Gardening is way deeper than that. It, oh, yeah. It's just, it's a, it's fresh air and birds and butterflies. And it's a spiritual thing. It gets you, it gets your hands back in the dirt. It makes you feel better or just, it's kind of fun to watch the uh, offices. They're starting to get out now. Yeah. And so they'll come through. You'll see a couple of gals or some folks walking through and going up. Oh, we're just on our lunch break. Yeah. Not here to just, therapy session that's what plants do for you they they uh, give you a they they, they uh, it's a living breathing thing that that ca- needs you to care for them and then they reward you with flowers and fruits and vegetables it's powerful stuff so True and then is. gardeners i mean anyone that puts on those funky gloves and a great big old hat <laughs> they've got to be great i mean they got to be really cool you got to have some confidence to pull that off so gardeners are just fun fun people. We get to see those folks here at Waters Garden Center. Uh, 
I agree. What What are some of the questions so we don't uh, spiral up down out of control? <laughs> well, it's <laughs> too one. late. It's I know. just too late. Yeah. Well, Gary and Chino would like to know. Last no. year, he put in several fruit trees. So he, they're going into their second season. Yeah. And he's curious about what type of watering schedule you would recommend. And also wants to know if now is the time to be fertilizing those. So, yeah, fruit trees. This is not just for Chino Valley. This is the entire Central Highlands area. This is from... Camp Verde, Cotton, Sedona, you folks tuned in there to Jerome, to up over the, the Dewey, Humboldt, Prescott Valley, all the way up to Paulden. I mean, it's all the way down to Hillside, Kirkland, Skull Valley. It's, it's us. This is March is your best time by far to fertilize for the spring, the plants. And then as soon as they start to bloom or leaf out, you should start thinking watering because now they're starting to use moisture. Mm -hmm. There's enough in the ground to keep them going for a week or two, but really you should start activating those irrigation systems by uh, April one, somewhere in there, so, somewhere in there, mm -hmm. there could still be some frost, but if you're seeing frost on fruit trees, a hydrated fruit tree will go through that frost cycle much, much stronger. You'll have your fruit last, your blossoms will stay better than a dry plant. Mm -hmm. So that'll be critical. Um, it, sometimes fruit trees can get tricked yeah. into blooming early. And then it get, we get that one last frost. We seem to have this one last event in April. So you might have some frost cover, a blanket, something to just handy mm -hmm. to keep it, keep it from the frost from lighting on top of those flowers, the fruits. And it's really for those apricots, nectarines, early blooming plums, right. maybe cherries, uh, usually apples and pears. They kind of, they bloom towards the end of April. So they're a little bit out of the fray. Mm -hmm. So just be ready. But going back to Gary's point in Chino Valley, Gary, water, start watering about once a week, deep watering starting about April okay. and then fertilize immediately. <laughs> and so we, we make a fruit tree food here. It's got six, four, four, seven, so it's, it's a really balanced for edible things. So, mm -hmm. so tomatoes, cucumbers, I grow giant pumpkins, but all the fruit trees, grapes, berries, they're going to benefit from our fruit and, and vegetable food because we've loaded it with 7% calcium. Very unusual fertilizer to see that much calcium, but we have calcium deficiencies here. Mm -hmm. And it's because of our alkalinity of our water and our soil that that, that happens. And so you get blossom end rot, Zucchinis will drop drop their fruits. The, 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 the flavor will be a little off or thick skinned. Uh, but, but calcium brings out the flavor and the color and the size of fruits, especially with your pitted fruits. Mm -hmm. So I would say use the fruit and vegetable food. It's organic. Spread it out there. Just chuck it on. Pray for more snow. Be perfect for, for, <laughs> How about for rain? your gardens. Oh, rain. I'd rather yeah. have rain. I am tired of snow, aren't you? <laughs> tired of the cold. I just want a nice warm rain. I feel like. <laughs> That'd be awesome. It's cold. Well, okay. Josh has a question. Uh, he has some smaller pinion pines in yeah. his yard. Uh, he was out there looking at them and noticed that the needles closer to the trunk were browning out and had black spots on them. Ooh, okay. Yeah, Wants okay. to know, hey, what is that? And yeah. should it be this treated? Is, this is dangerous. So we are seeing the first wave of pinion pine scale starting to show up. And those are the indications. You'll also see we're seeing some egg laying right now. So mm -hmm. they've hatched. So scale will get on the needles and they leave little black dots. And I think that's what he's describing. But when they hatch, when they're going to lay eggs, they, the adults go, okay, I'm tired of hanging out with this scale over me. They come out to make whoopee down to the bottom of the, <laughs> of the tree or the main crotches or certain areas where they kind of congregate and lay these big cottony egg, egg sacs. It's a funky sacks, looking thing. Yeah. You'll be going, whoa, that's weird. What is that? It's dangerous. Get rid of it. Uh, what to do. Um, they can kill a pinion pine. They've wiped out, mm -hmm. obliterated entire neighborhoods. Not a pinion pine is left without treating. So first thing you can do is fertilize. I would say fertilize your native trees. It is important, especially the pinion pines and the ponderosas. They're going to benefit. Aphids are on the ponderosas, scale are on the pinion pines. It'll benefit them. Make some stronger, more buffs, you know, just bigger muscles. Mm -hmm. But then for that particular pinion pine scale, we make a product called plant protector. It's a liquid. You could you can administer. You do not need to be an, uh, an arborist by any means. 
you just need a watering can in this bottle. But what you do is you measure around the trunk, the circumference, just whatever. Okay, it's 12 inches around. You put 12 ounces of this product in your watering can, top it off with water, and you pour it right at the trunk, right where the trunk meets the ground, that crown area, right there where the trunk meets that soil. You pour it around that, and the plant will actually absorb this plant protector. It goes up through the sap, through the cambia layer, through that, that tree, mm-hmm. and then it taints the sap so that when they pierce that needle and suck the juice out, try to kill it, it they, they get some of this. It's kind of like an antibiotic for trees. Let's think of it that way. Highly effective. One application lasts for a year. Great stuff. So plant protector and fertilize. Come see us for more because the whole, like the whole neighborhood, everyone's coming in for this stuff right now. Ken and Lisa Lane, right back after this. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Safe, natural, organic fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. Waters Garden companion plants of March are Prescott Pansies, Mountain Heath, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Oklahoma Redbud. Oklahoma Redbud grows to just 16 feet tall. This local native is super easy to grow. Vibrant red flowers cloak the branches of early spring. Luscious heart-shaped leaves emerge with a soft pink tinge that matures to a vibrant green. Shop the brightest blooming trees in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. Now we are seeing so many new gardeners here in this this. Central Highlands area. I think all of Arizona is that way, but it's really pronounced uh, out towards that North Valley area that between uh, Prescott Valley, uh, Paquito Valley, uh, Paul and Chino, that area, uh, Williamson Valley. It's just a boom. There's huge subdivisions going in. Lots of new folks. And, and you poor Californians, you take the brunt of all the, half of all the new customers are from California. The other half are from everywhere. They're coming from everywhere. It's not just California. And so we're seeing, one thing I can tell you is it is different from anywhere else. Our gardening here is unique in that it's got heavy clay soil, alkaline water, bright sun, a wind, the altitude. All these variables will change it. And you'll make some mistakes. And it's okay. That's how you learn gardening. You don't learn it by reading a blog or tuning into a radio station, hearing the, the, the garden guru come over the airwaves. You can, you, can, you can make less mistakes that way. But truly, you, to learn the limits of what can I do, what can I do, did I get enough organics in my soil, how often should I fertilize, we can get you close, but your yard's going to be unique. You're going to, you're going to need to tweak that. That's called gardening. And, and if you make a mistake, forgive yourself. It's just, it's not a puppy dog. It's just a plant. And for $3.99, you can get a new one. It's just not, it's not that so many folks beat themselves up that are new to gardening. I think we need to forgive ourselves sometimes. It's all right. That's how we learn. Gardening, planting a tree, shrub, a, a grape, berries, bigger rooted things, roses. If you're planting bigger things, here's how you do it. And I've, I've, I've literally planted thousands of plants for myself or other folks. And I've, I've gardened throughout the county. So from Chino Valley to Skull Valley uh, to, to, to Prescott, many places, Dewey, I've gardened everywhere. And so, or farmed, one of the two. And so here's what really works. And our soil is rough. There is no 
nutritional topsoil, typically for most of your backyards. Some of you have some old farmland, let's say out in Chino Valley. There, there's some of those older properties have beautiful soil, but they're far if you between all the new subdivisions. It, you might as well have a jackhammer. Just oh, buy the jackhammer. You're going to need it. It's it's rough soil, and so you'll need to dig that hole. Uh, here's the size. Don't go that deep. Just go as deep as whatever the bucket is and then go wide. The roots grow sideways. They don't go down that taproot. It's a total myth. There is no taproot. It goes down about 18 inches, maybe, hooks are right and starts running across the yard. I call it the big hockey stick. And so that's how plants are growing. If you know that's how they're going to root out, help them. Dig the hole, a bowl-shaped hole that's three times the width but the same depth, as your root ball. So much easier to dig a wide, narrow, shallow hole than it is a deep hole. And then most of us, this is my first house in Prescott Valley back in the 90s. Oh, it's hard clay. Uh, my house here currently up in Eagle Ridge overlooking the Dells. It's hard, hard clay. Here, um, I, I would suggest adding quite a bit of compost. So we call it premium mulch. So with that hard clay soil, we need to keep that soil from compacting right back to, a, to a, basically a dirt clod. And so that soil that you dug out of that hole, screen it down. Anything that's golf ball sized or larger, screen it. Get it out of there. Rocks, roots, weeds, things that are in there that are bigger than a, than a, rock, than a golf ball, get, screen it out. Those things bake in the summer, they're too, the particles are too big for water molecules to stick to, and so the plants dry out faster. So screen it down some. And then what's left over, add about 25% mulch to your native soil. The plants have to get used to that native soil. We're just trying to help it start getting rooted easier out into that surrounding soil. So about 25% or one scoop of mulch to three scoops of native earth. Blend that together and use that to backfill around that root ball. If you've got really heavy clay and you're not sure about drainage, I encourage customers I help here at, the, here at the garden center, in the morning, fill that hole up. Fill that new planting hole up with water. And if you've got water still sitting there at the end of the day, you dug a bathtub. A, a plant is not going to grow there. We'll need to dig a little bit further. We call it a chimney. We'll dig a portion of that, that root ball down to the next soil band, and all of a sudden it'll start draining. But make sure it drains if you're not sure. That's an easy way to do it. Fill it with water. If it's there 12 hours later, you need to do some more work. I also found with my evergreens, it really helped when I left a little bit of the roots out of the ground and then slightly mound that, it, I'm planting on a, I'm creating a slight mound for that plant. So in the monsoon rains in the summer, I can guarantee the roots can breathe. The roots need oxygen at the root level and they give off oxygen up at the upper, upper levels. So anyway, let's make sure those roots can breathe. When I'm all done, I've packed my soil around there. It's, I'm ready to water it in. I'll water it in. I'll take a handful of fertilizer called all-purpose plant food, and I'll sprinkle that around the root ball. That's what's going to feed it for the next three months, encourage new roots. Then at the very end, I water it in with root and grow. Root and grow is a, it's a compost tea we make, but it helps stabilize those roots, help it to, to encourage new root growth and keep it from going into transplant shock. But that's what you do. So it's same depth, three times the width, Mulch, food, root and grow. We've got a handout that walks you right through that with pictures. It's exactly how much size plant. If you didn't quite catch all that, come ask for our planting guide here at Waters Garden Center. Be right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevation. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. The colors of spring are bursting at Waters' 60th Spring Open House. COVID is over, with a record number of Waters farmers showing off their newest, brightest flowers all weekend. Friday, we show off this year's showiest plant introductions. Saturday and Sunday, it's impromptu garden classes, plant garden giveaways, and drawings. Join the garden fun at Waters Garden Center's 60th Spring Open House, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, March 11th through 13th. 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion plants for March are Oklahoma Redbud, 
Mountain Heath, Prescott Pansies, Fanciful Forsythia, and Rosemary Creeper. Rosemary Creeper is a local favorite for rock gardens, ground cover, or spilling over retaining walls. But not all local rosemary is created equal. This one lives where others die. Knowing you can also use it in the kitchen is sheer bliss. Shop the freshest organic herbs in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding with a few Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. Back in the studio is my favorite gal of all time, time. Lisa Waters Lane, (laughs) who's been married 35 years, coming up on 35 in July, Mm -hmm. 34, glorious. (laughs) I would repeat every single one. Some are better than others, but I repeat every single one with you. There you go. Well, thank you, dear. So we come back to the studio and this, this segment is all just what what are you seeing so to share some garden knowledge from you a different perspective mm-hmm. and so we have loaded up the garden center with lots of the spring new spring um plants mm-hmm. here at the garden center because we have a spring open house this is our yeah. 60th year in business your father harold Waters, started the place Back in 1962, this is our mm-hmm. third location here on Iron Springs Road. We've been here since 1983, and he never dreamed we would use all the property. It's a <laughs> huge property, and he's, he he came in up until the last week of his. Yep. He would come in uh, not, almost weekly because mm-hmm. he loved plants. Yes, so he did. I th- I should give a shout out to Quad City Business News. Mm-hmm. Uh, their March issue, they put your dad on the front cover. And then there's a two-page spread inside about his life, what he did, where he came from, where he, how he came. So, so uh, Lisa's dad passed a, about three weeks ago. His services this week, and so they're celebrating. He was a businessman here in town, a gardener, a landscaper, and so those the agriculture folks. I'd like to shout out also uh, um, Mortimer Family Farms out in Dewey. They gave us a beautiful, it was very uh, nice. few beautiful gift basket, yeah. just loaded up with all their goodies mm-hmm. straight from the gardens. So just very classy. Yeah. So all the business and agriculture folks have been rallying around us. So thank you all for that. Appreciate that. But flowers just make everyone do better. And we're introducing <laughs> those. I was hoping to have your dad. I'll yeah. see if I can get an old, uh, a previous uh, um, interview with him. I'll see if I can share that. I'll, let me dig through the files and see what I can find. That would yeah. be fun. It would be. Maybe next week I'll, mm-hmm. I'll kind of air that. But uh, so our Waters Garden Center, 60th Spring Open House this weekend, all weekend. I didn't know it'd snow like three times this week. <laughs> Generally, want to, but it's spring. It's you know, spring. This week is spring. We wanted to be ready. That's We're setting our clocks back. So anyway. Is it back or forward? I have no clue. Spring forward, fall back. I'm thankful that uh, we live in Arizona where we don't have to think in those terms. <laughs> I know. We just do our own thing. That's a very Arizona yes, it is. kind of thing. Yeehaw. Yes, it is. Oh, I don't know about yeehaw, but I think I'm going to put my cowboy hat on next time I think about. Uh, I like your street. hat, your shamrock hat. Yeah, it's, you know, cool. it's uh, St. Patty's Day. Mm-hmm. We picked uh, St. Patty. Your father was born on St. Patty's Day. So yeah. we picked his celebration of life Saint Patty's for day. that day. In fact, we used to. Basically, when he was running, we were working together. We'd basically have green everywhere yeah. to celebrate his birthday. It's kind of the start of spring, mm-hmm. something to kind of, and we're kind of bored. We <laughs> want to get ready for spring. So uh, yeah. I took out a full page ad when he turned 50. Oh, um, oh I remember seeing that. It was, uh, <laughs> It was a morbid. It was like, we're so sorry for you, Harold. It was dark humor. It was dark humor. Yeah. It was hilarious. Anyway. But he had the sense of humor. He would definitely appreciate that. Yes, so. yes, he would. It was all good. Yeah. So what do we have that uh, maybe well, we can inspire folks let's do inspire. to garden some this spring? I do want to inspire. So we do have some beautiful spring flowers in. So this one. This is ranunculus. It's probably one of my favorite spring flowers just because of the colors. Oh my gosh, you get these deep reds, you get bright yeah. yellows, fabulous orange. Um, this one I just really love. It's kind of a pink blush one, kind of a variegated color. And it's such a cool 
plant and it just screams spring. It looks like a peony flower. Does it it smell? does. It doesn't smell like a no. peony. Peonies have that, that very vibrant. Mm -hmm. The beauty of peony is that they smell good and they look good. Right. This one looks like a peony. Right. But it's but not. very, very pretty and wonderful to mix in with other things. But um, just dynamic colors. Definitely, want, if you want to do some spring pots, uh, spring baskets, uh, this is definitely one you need to have in with those. And this will take the cold. So it's not, oh, yeah. this is an early spring thing. Right. It's fine with that. You can plant it right now and you wouldn't have to cover it no. to, to protect it. It would just keep blooming mm -hmm. over and over. This will bloom pretty much all spring. I like the way that right. looks. That's like a double. This is when it pays to be tuned into the vlog. Right. The video. You can see. Thing, right, exactly. The podcast. But for you folks on the airwaves driving by, going out to Costco, wherever you're going, um, <laughs> It's pretty. They're available it is pretty. here. It's waters. like a big double rose blossom be almost. Four very, inches very across, mm -hmm. double flower, dark center, yeah. light pink, fluffy. It's like a, I don't know, ballet skirt or something. <laughs> tutu. Okay. We'll move on. You're yeah. getting too descriptive. So this one is the ornamental poppy. This is another one of my favorites. It just screams spring. And so this one's a mix. They call it the gnome mix. Gnome, but, like, uh, garden like garden gnome? gnomes. Yeah, that's kind of weird. So it usually has orange and white and yellow, uh, sometimes pink. So it's just you'll get a variety of colors off of one plant. So this is orange. It's blooming right now. Mm -hmm. big, maybe it's way bigger than a silver dollar. It's, it's, oh, yeah. big, it's as big as a think four inches napkin or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Small cocktail napkin. But each of these flowers, these are all buds. You can show mm -hmm. that on the video. Each of these are buds, and they're going to come out in different colors? Yes. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> Brilliant. What? The garden yeah, guy I know. didn't yes, know I, something? I don't even know gardening. It's impossible to know everything about gardening. I just think they're so pretty. Just that papery blossom is very delicate. Uh, just I don't a know if they can see that on pots. the video, but the yeah. stems of the flowers are very hairy. Hairy. Yeah. They're textured, which makes them very robust against mm -hmm. animals. Right. So rabbits, mm -hmm. uh, deer, javelina, I found, seem to leave this alone. Right. So it's because that's a defense the flower puts on to keep the vermin away. <laughs> poppies. Poppies do well. It's related to a California poppy. Right. Only on steroids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's more of an annual. Loves the yeah. cool seasons. Uh, but just beautiful out in the pots. Wonderful to look at. Really yeah. lifts your heart up. Makes you want to smile. and Makes you want to garden. Go spring is almost Oh, here. it does have a smell. It does smell good. Yeah, yeah, smell that. It does have a fragrance. Yeah. Huh. I chew. You know? <laughs> I know. My allergies are like, uh, And the so last. The junipers are going oh, crazy right now. Yeah. I oh, just man. got in here. My nose is yeah. burning. So this one is the Frizzle Sizzle Pansy, uh, which has you used to call them flirty skirts. So we have all kinds of pansies in all different colors. But I love this one because it has that uh, texture in the blonde. What do you go? Ruffled texture yeah. to it. Uh, just so pretty, so different out there. And that one's kind of a dark purple, but also it has that mix. So you're getting a, a few different colors in there at the same time. That one's drooping over the edge. needs a Viagra or something. I think it <laughs> off. There, the rest of them are all perky and pretty okay, and good. upright. Well, I'm glad you deadheaded it for <laughs> me. But those flowers, of all the ones we just talked about, are just so perfect for spring. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have Dianthus in. We have Dusty Miller. Uh, just so many wonderful plants right now that you could be filling your containers with and just in, in celebrating spring uh, because we definitely need to do that. We I, need to I would say too, if, if you're thinking flowers and, and you can have flowers, you can have a full on flower garden right now, even though there's snow mm -hmm. on the mountaintops, you can have that if you put the right ones, if you're putting right. these in, mm -hmm. if you're doing flowers this year, I would say even some bigger vegetables, let's say in containers, tomatoes and cucumbers and that kind of stuff, get a bottle of flower power. Mm. It's our water soluble fertilizer. So it's got a scoop in there um, and, and you, one scoop per gallon of water, put it in your watering can, top it off. But if you were to fertilize these twice a month, just, just yeah. not that regularly, just every other week, mm -hmm. top it off and fertilize it with flower power you will have three times the amount of flower buds, size, color. It's made, we made this fertilizer to bring the color out of things that bloom. Mm -hmm. But it works equally as well on things that fruit. So anything, it's just got a lot of phosphorus in it. And that's what brings out that 
color, the size, and the flower buds. But if you're going to be flower gardening, get a bottle. Oh, see, oh, yeah. One bottle will cover a whole season. Yeah. But it really is a game changer. Hanging oh, baskets. Yeah. You, you need. You have to have this to keep them blooming mm -hmm. and looking really good. Yeah, and it really does work. We we have many customers that come back in and go, oh, it does work. They do keep it blooming, so it's definitely worth doing. So, Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, yes, you can have flowers in your backyard as well. We'll be right back. Yes. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants for March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heaths, Rosemary Creeper, Prescott Pansies, and Fanciful Forsythia. Fanciful Forsythia is a gorgeous spring shrub that explodes with masses of solar yellow flowers, followed by shiny green leaves. Every home should have one for sheer beauty, fall color, and gentle natural care. Shop the brightest spring bloomers in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. Oh no, my pine trees look terrible. Never fear, Plant Protector is here. Plant Protector? From Waters Garden Center? My super strength protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. All right, we are back with Ken Lane and the Mountain Gardener. And one of the benefits of having a studio right here on the right here at the garden center, right here, Waters Garden Center, my office, I've got a radio studio. And so when you get friends that come in and they've got like true talent, you're going, oh, oh, Andy, you, you've got to come in here and share that information with me. So uh, Andy Dannenberger with Fertilome, he is one of the foremost uh, uh, knowledgeable, uh, anytime you grow a plant, you need foods, bug killers, uh, fungicides. You need things to make those plants grow and look well. Well, Andy is the guy in the country that we go to that helps us grow our plants better here at Waters Garden Center. So, Andy, welcome to uh, the Mountain Gardener and Waters Garden Center. Well, thank you very much. This is so, so, so tell us about yourself. So, your title keeps expanding. You've been with Fertilome how long? And then you're like, you control like the country, right? Or some crazy, well, my huge. My title is a senior regional sales manager okay. or just sales manager. But yes, I am uh, cover the Western United States. So okay. I live in Southern California. I physically call in California, Nevada, and Hawaii, but I'm responsible for the Western U.S., yes. So how many people work underneath you? How many people? That's that's no Six. small task. Six. Six. Yep. I got other regular regional managers across the, the Western part of the country, Pacific Northwest, Denver, Texas, yeah. Oklahoma. Sure. Absolutely. Yep. What I love about Fertilome is that they are a true co-op. So agriculture is, is used to co-op. So you are member-owned. Uh, you're, you're dealing with smaller dealers. You're, you're Correct. focused on not the box. You don't count on them at all because you, your patrons are us. Yep. I mean, I'm a, one of the owners yeah. of whatever. And It's you're... two things. Two things we specialize that's so important to you um, and to independent dealers is ownership and protection. And like you said, we're a patron-owned company. So our, all of our 10,000 dealers that we do business with all over the country, they own Fertilome. And then not only that, protection part of it is that we only sell to independent dirt and nurseries and garden centers. Yeah. No mass merchants. I love it in that we have influence. Like when we speak, what I call, I, I've got your cell number. I can call you direct. The, the guy, second from the top, I go, hey, Andy. Uh, 24-7. You know, we're, we're having a problem with this, or could you look into this, or could we actually put a request in for a Southwest mix of whatever? And you actually listen to us, and you've come up with products we do. that are actually made for this part of the country. Absolutely. Very, very responsive. And you only get that with a co-op uh, where, where people are coming together and go, we, can do, we can't do it 
the supply chain isn't there for us, but we can come together and make it for ourselves. And that's kind of your, yeah, you're our go-to guy. That's the part of the ownership and where we respond to our dealers by what their needs are from what their consumers are telling them. So what are you seeing this year that's maybe different or what products seem to be trending or what could listeners that are, this is broadcast all over Northern Arizona, Henderson, I mean, basically this part of the country, what are something you maybe you could share or that gardeners should look at that you think your fertile home can help them with? What are some things you're teaching other dealers? Right. Well, we have, you know, 350 SKUs that yeah. we have in our, in our barn that we sell through lawn and garden distribution all over the country. But uh, I think right here where you are and where we're working and the, the consumers that you have in Northern California, I mean, we, you specialize in three or four you know, or a half a dozen different SKUs that you have in, in your particular store. But Humic is always a really good one. Um, turf and Ornamental Weed and Grass Stopper is an excellent one, one that everybody should be applying right now at this time of the year to prevent those weeds from happening. And then once once spring really pops open and gets warmed up, then there's that triple action plus out there for, to control all those insects. Bugs, those are the, so. those are the, some of the some of the things that we have right now that uh, everybody should be looking at. So explain to folks Humic. Mm-hmm. You were explaining that to a class here earlier, uh, had a class full of just students, local gardeners, and you you made it really, you made a case for humic. And I I learned something. Could you share some of those, where it's harvested, how it works? And that was fascinating. Yeah, um, humic is interesting um, besides the name. I mean, it's, it's it's derived from linardite. And if you Google that, you'll learn a little bit more about it. But it's really old decomposed material harvested deep down in the in the ground from um, mines in New Mexico and North Dakota. And we process that, put it in a bag. It's granular. Um, you sprinkle it out like fertilizer. It's a supplement. It has no MPK, so it's not a fertilizer, but it is a supplement. But it's a great, great product to unlock nutrients, feed microorganisms, detoxify the soil, and has some great drought properties. Now, I knew New Mexico, but not North Dakota. But is this a mine where you, do you see a vein of this yeah, composted? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Is it fossilized, like yeah, fossilized, compost or something? Yeah, or- yeah. Oh, it's just real rich mocha mm-hmm. looking, yep. real dark, flaky material. Real dark brown, looks black. organic-y. Yep. It's got a good smell to it. Yep. It's under our natural guard uh, um, label, um, so it fits right into there. It's humic acid, and it works great in the so- in the soils to help unlock all those nutrients. Sometimes, you know, you have people I know come to the nursery and they ask, you know, I've been fertilizing, fertilizing over time, but my plants or my lawn just don't seem to respond. And this is something that will help unlock those nutrients. So now folks that, that are tuned in. So I, he, Andy comes in and he teaches our staff. So I'm going to, I'm going to pretend like you're part of the staff and I'm going to ask him questions that I really want to know the answer to. And it may not pertain directly to your backyard, but, but I hopefully will learn something together. But tell me if I'm selling this right or, or promoting it right. What I use the humic for is when a customer comes in and they have a stressed out plant and it just the leaves are browning you can tell it's been grossly overwatered or underwater it's just under stress i go oh humic you put this around and it will help that plant it will it will neutralize the plant and then help it to reform more roots underneath them Am I explaining that right? Is Absolutely. there a better way to do that, or Absolutely. does that seem to do it? Or what it does is also feeds microorganisms okay. in the soil. There we go. Natural ones or ones that are already in organic fertilizers, and so it feeds those microorganisms, and those microorganisms attach themselves to root hairs and roots on plants and trees and flowers and shrubs and vegetables, everything. And it elongates and makes a healthier, bigger root system. And when you have that healthier root system, you have what? You have a healthier plant. If you have a healthier plant, you have better fruits and flowers. That's perfect. Yeah, so that's that's perfect. Great. Mm -hmm. The other one is I I tell folks, put it in that new vegetable bed or flower bed where you're starting seed, Mm -hmm. uh, lawns. uh, But put it on a lawn before you put the seed down. And again, it makes sense. It'll help that root start forming and encourage longer root hairs. Yep. So the weed and grass stopper, the high yield weed and yep. grass stopper, that's you. Um, how does that work? I mean, that's, can you give us a science behind that? So you, you put it on the ground, keeps seed from even germinating. How does it do that? Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool technology. It's a, uh, it's high yield turf ornamental weed and grass stopper. It's dimension. That's the okay. active ingredient. And it is creates a well, like a one inch gaseous layer on the surface of the soil. And it just basically prevents weed seeds from germinating. 
not allowing it to go up to the root, uh, the soil surface, and germinate. And it does that, and it's active for about two to three months, depending on how gotcha. much rain or water you get. Now, I tell folks, put it on now, early, before yeah, the weeds come up. You time. need it on before the weeds come up. And then put it on again right before the monsoon season hits. So we have a rain, rain cycle in July. If you can put it on, that weed and grasshopper, before the rains come, that's when the tumbleweeds, uh, the goat head, whorehound starts to come up. Those na- nasty weeds, yep. they're really bad. Just put it on before, and you won't have weeds. Exactly. But it, it starts to form that, that gaseous layer, that one inch, mm-hmm. the way you explained it. It starts to germinate, and it doesn't allow it to get to the surface. Is that what exactly. you're saying? Exactly. Exactly. Oh. That's exactly how it okay. works. It, and like I said, it's a pre-emergent. So it prevents anything that, to happen. Yeah. yeah. Magical stuff. It, the, my favorite product that you have, absolute, my number one. It's always in my garage, always on the shelf, triple action. And you mentioned that just briefly, put, right. passed over it. The best organic bug control Ever and I've tried them all. Yeah, it's the my triple favorite. action. It aphids, mealybugs on house plants. I mean, it's safe White for cats. Yeah, safe for dogs. They're not going to hurt hummingbirds. That triple action. That is, anytime someone goes, this is a is this a bug? Is it a problem? I go, yeah, it's a problem. It's eating your plant. <laughs> I always go triple action because right. it's got a broad. Range. That, keep that up. Don't let that product go. Yeah, exactly. That is a magical. It's a contact spray. It's curative. So right when you see the insects on your plants, um, fruits, flowers, vegetables, whatever, you spray that right right then. Yeah. It's derived from pyrethrins and neem. Um, it's completely organic. It's in the natural gut, or excuse me, it's in the fertilome label. Um, it's OMRI certified. Um, so it's great and safe to use in your yard. Andy Dannenberger with Fertilome, the guy that controls this half of the country for that particular co-op. Thank you for being here, Andy. You're Appreciate very welcome. That. Means Thanks a lot. for being here. I feel special, so just having you here in the studio, much less at the Garden Center. All right, we will be back in just a moment after these important messages. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heat, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Prescott Pansy. Prescott Pansy's giant three-inch flowers thrive in extreme March gardens. Large velvety blooms dazzle with radiant colors of blue, violet, yellow, and variations of stripes that look like smiling faces and love being planted in March. Shop the brightest spring flowers in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. This is how I know the pandemic is starting to wrap up. And so we've had uh, two years of of COVID kind of chaos. And I've invited, we have a spring open house every year. And we didn't, every year we've had one, including COVID years. And we would invite our growers, the farmers that actually grow the different plants we we grow. We have many different farms that we invite them in. They come in and, and just talk, hang out. And they talk nerdy talk, garden talk with folks. And they can go deep. I mean, really deep. Like, how do you patent a new flower? These guys know how to do that. They We invite them to come in and just hang out during our spring open house. That'll be this Saturday. That's, that's this weekend. We're starting that. I wish it was a little bit warmer, but they all came. A record number came. We've got nine different farmers here from all over the Southwest, coming in from Tucson, uh, uh, Fallbrook, California, uh, Fresno, uh, Portland, uh, uh, Colorado. They're coming from everywhere. Uh, uh, even uh, New Mexico, uh, Trees of Corrales. They grow some of the best natives ever. They're coming in to, just to talk to gardeners, hang out. 
Uh, and then I threw a party for him after just as a thankful, got catered some stuff. Thank you, Goods for the Gardens. You guys are awesome, Deb. Love you guys. Uh, you make me look good. So they're going to cater a meal for us afterward. Just we'll hang out and just talk shop, talk gardening. No, actually, we'll talk farming uh, with each other for the, for the evening. But you can hang out all Saturday. They're all over the place. Come talk to them. They'll just chit-chat. And they are not my employees. They just grow my plants. So we contract grow. Uh, we know who grows the best tomatoes, the best geraniums, the best fruit trees. We, we hire them to grow our fruits for us. And then they bring them in. But they're going to talk about those while they're here. I invite you to come come all weekend we'll be doing that friday we had a class that afternoon new introductions we'll do that again saturday we'll have the grower feature show off their new things which is kind of fun not all of them interview real well but they can answer any question in any depth you could think of it's it's actually pretty fascinating and then saturday or sunday lisa and i we're just going to camp out here after the radio show we're just going to camp out in the lower greenhouse and just be here for gardeners all all Sunday long. So about 10 to 2 or so. Hopefully I get enough energy. We got, there's a lot going on this week. Memorials and gearing up for, for families coming in. So our house is packed. Families coming from everywhere. Seems like families only get together for weddings and funerals. Well, this is the latter coming in. I can't wait to see all the cousins, nephews, uh, nieces, kids grandkids it'll be a hoot but it wears me out anymore and then we're trying to launch a spring open house there's a lot going on but i think we're going to be here on sunday just it'll be a break for lisa and i just to chat talk gardening to folks it's our passion it's what we love to do it's why we have a garden center it's why we raised our kids in a garden center uh, we've got four kids and all four of them are really amazing gardeners well yeah they might specialize one's got more you know, houseplant knowledge. One's got more container gardens. Mackenzie loves uh, container gardening, flowers, funky trees. Uh, our son is a captain in the uh, army, and he just loves landscape design. He has, of course, he's had several houses, so he's been designing for a while. He loves that. That's his therapy. When he gets off base, he runs a medical clinic on base. He just comes home and he gardens. That's his thing. And so uh, anyway, that's it's kind of fun to see that. It'll be good to have the family together. But any in, invite to this year's Spring Open House here at Waters Garden Center. There's a lot going on. Lots of new plants. We've packed the place up with new plants that, that will be featured. Some are starting to show color. Forsythia, they're in full bloom. Lilacs are in full bud, starting to crack. It's kind of fun. Uh, Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. We hang out here at Waters Garden Center. We love talking to fans of the show. The colors of spring are bursting at Waters' 60th Spring Open House. COVID is over, with a record number of Waters farmers showing off their newest, brightest flowers all weekend. Friday, we show off this year's showiest plant introductions. Saturday and Sunday, it's impromptu garden classes, plant garden giveaways, and drawings. Join the garden fun at Waters Garden Center's 60th Spring Open House, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, March 11th through 13th. 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.